Hello, I'm Dr. Neema Bhatt, Senior Consultant, Hematologist, PMT Physician and Pediatric Oncologist. Um, I work in Fortis Hospitals, Bangalore, as well as Helios Cancer and Hematology Clinics here in Jayanagar, Bangalore. Um, today's topic is going to be a little different. So everybody gets worried when their hemoglobin or their blood counts are on the lower side or low, um, especially if the hemoglobin is low, ablated counts are low or if the WBC counts are low. Today, I'm going to talk about the opposite topic. Um, should you be worried if your blood counts are high? So today, I'll only address regarding hemoglobin being high because that is one of the common conditions that we come across as a hematologist. And that is something that has to be evaluated and treated accordingly. So routinely, we see a lot of patients nowadays um, for either insurance purposes or health reasons, they go for a master health checkup. Most often, they are asymptomatic, which means they don't have any issues. They're not experiencing any symptoms or problems. But as part of a preventive measure or, um, you know, um, cautious measure, they go in for blood tests, which I highly encourage and support because we need to keep an eye on our body, especially as we grow older, to make sure that we are free of diseases. Or if we, uh, you know, if we are catching some disease, then we have to make sure to pick it up in the right time so it can be treated accordingly. So what is this high hemoglobin? As I have explained in my other videos, there are three components to blood, red blood cells, WBCs and platelets. These red blood cells are nothing but cells that carry oxygen from uh, the lungs to various parts of the body and uh, also carry glucose and other, uh, you know, supplements or nutrition that tissues need in our body. So what, what is high hemoglobin? So normal levels of hemoglobin for a female is anywhere between the range of 12 to around 15. Um, when the hemoglobin goes beyond 16.5, which is way or well above the normal limit, according to World Health Organization or WHO guidelines, it qualifies for what we call erythrocytosis or polycythemia. So polycythemia is a condition where there is increased production of blood. For Similarly as for women, for men, the cutoff is 17.5. So normal range for a man um, of hemoglobin is anywhere between 13.5 or 14 all the way until 16, 16.5. But when it goes 17.5 or higher, that is called polycythemia and it itself is a medical condition that has to be evaluated. What are the causes for this polycythemia? So there can be two different types of polycythemia. We call it primary polycythemia and secondary polycythemia, which is nothing but primary is when your blood is being produced increasingly because of some process that is going on in the body. It can be because of a genetic mutation. It can be because of a disorder that we will have to evaluate and probably treat. Secondary polycythemia is something that happens because of external uh, you know, influences. So most common cause for secondary polycythemia is smoking. So uh, somebody who has been smoking even for a period of about six months or one year can see you know, um, significant increase in their hemoglobin. This happens because the body thinks that because of smoke, um, there is increased production of red blood cells because carbon dioxide levels increase inside the body. So the body is desperately trying to increase the oxygen content in circulation um, and because of which increased hemoglobin is produced. So as I said, one of the most common reasons for uh, secondary polycythemia or uh, that is increased hemoglobin is cigarette smoking. It can be cigarette, it can be BD, it can be a uh, cigar, uh, it can even be a smoking pipe. So anything that has tobacco in it um, and you know there is smoke involved, it goes to the lungs, can cause increased hemoglobin production. Apart from this, there are a few other factors like nowadays increased exposure to some industrial chemicals, uh, people who are living at a high altitude. So if you are living on a, on a mountain, say as opposed to Bangalore, if you're living in Shimla, then you will automatically have a slightly higher level of hemoglobin, which is your body's way of adjusting to lower oxygen levels that are found in the higher altitudes. Um, there are a few types of hemoglobin that are uh, you know, special or different from the regular public that can also cause elevated hemoglobin levels just because they have a different mechanism to carry this oxygen and that has to be evaluated by a hematologist. What else do we do as part of uh, you know, evaluating a patient who has high hemoglobin. First thing we do is get a detailed history. Um, and if they are you know, a smoker, then we um, strongly counsel them or encourage them to quit smoking because that's one of the easiest things that a patient can do to start reducing their hemoglobin. Now, why is it important to know about increased hemoglobin? So blood usually flows freely inside blood vessels or arteries or veins. 
you know, like water. But if hemoglobin becomes higher, it becomes thicker like honey and it, it's at more risk to clot. So when a clot forms, you can have various um, problems because of that. You can have a stroke. You can have a clot in the lungs that can cause your oxygen levels to drop. It can make you get chest pains and make you feel like it's difficult to breathe. Um, you can have what we call a DVT or deep vein thrombus, which can be anywhere in the extremities, in the legs or hands. Uh, it can also cause you to have a stroke. So having a very high hemoglobin level can have deleterious effects and can have serious consequences. Uh, what is the treatment? So if we see that a patient is having high hemoglobin, we first check for a particular hormone called erythropoietin and uh, depending on that, diagnose them with either primary or secondary polycythemia. And then one of the first things that need to be done is if the hemoglobin is higher than 17.5, we do what is called, we recommend what is called phlebotomy. So this excess blood needs to be removed and discarded and uh, blood count has to be checked about a week after that to see has the counts come down and is it in control or do we need to go for phlebotomy or this removal of excess blood probably one more time. Along with that, of course, we I mean, um, strongly encourage lifestyle modifications like quitting smoking, making sure you're physically active and mobile, making sure to hydrate yourself and prevent dehydration because all these are things that can cause uh, further elevation of the hemoglobin. Apart from this, you have to watch out for symptoms of high, hemoglo high hemoglobin, like feeling dizzy, feeling heavy headed, getting recurrent headaches, um, sometimes having blurry vision, of course, having symptoms of stroke, severe chest pain that can be an indication of a heart attack, severe cramping pain in your hands or legs or um, you know, arms that again can in indicate that there may be a blood clot there. Now, what, what do you have to remember also about high hemoglobin is it can be part of a genetic problem. Uh, we call them myeloproliferative disorders, which is basically the bone marrow is producing a lot more blood than it is necessary. That happens because of a genetic mutation. In that case, the hematologist will evaluate you for that particular genetic mutation and probably do a bone marrow aspiration biopsy to look at the factory site and make sure that everything is you know, okay over there and it's not because of a problem in the bone marrow. And accordingly treat, if we do find a problem, then we treat, um, you know, if, there, if it is a myeloproliferative condition, we treat for that uh, condition. And if there is a genetic mutation, we follow the patient closely so that they don't have any other blood related problems that might crop up later in life. If you have any questions about increased blood uh, and blood clowns, kindly feel free to reach out to me. I'm Dr. Neema Bhatt. Thank you. <music>